Man, this tournament's really interesting because it can literally be one doing anything. Offshore, shallow, finesse fishing, flutter spooning, power fishing, frogging. We're gonna have to figure them out because we're gonna have about 50 rods on the deck, I think. Welcome back guys. Stage four of the Bass Pro Tour. We're here in Gunnersville, Alabama. Here's what happened during day one of practice. So to start practice, I started on a shad spawn or attempted to start on a shad spawn. Going to spook around this morning. I just had a bite. I don't know if it was multiple fish there or not, but. Not much luck. I caught a couple drum, one small bass. First bite, had to come on a fairy one. Gunnersville dink. Really, I just never got on that shad spawn. I know it's gonna happen somewhere, just didn't happen for us. So as I moved offshore, it was tough, but I caught a few fish, found a couple schools. I caught one on a drop shot. I got one right now, that's a spot, I bet. Yeah. No, it's a little work, huh? Yeah, on a drop shot. There's so many spotted bass in this lake right now. Uh, found a school with a flutter spoon, ended up catching a good largemouth. That's not a spot. That's cool. Cool. Oh. Spotted bass. Yeah. Then I caught one on a jig head minnow. boats around so I gotta be careful with this fish but there's a big gunner's well four pounder right there. I'm not even on the sweet spot yet. And these were some big schools of fish but it's the problem is is it's so clear so clean and there's no current so there's nothing to hold these fish to the structure. When you catch one the entire school comes to the boat and when that happens it's just toast. You're never gonna get another bite. And that brings us to day two. As you can see we are not deep I'm throwing some really weird stuff. I don't know, you'll see that later. But what we've got here is we've got brim spawning everywhere shallow. The most brim I've ever seen. And uh, the, bass are, the bass are up here feeding on them. There's a few largemouth still spawning. I've marked a couple that are, I mean, worth catching. You know, you're three pounders. But the majority of what's up here are brim eaters. They're, they're, they're just lurking around up here. If they turn the current on, I think a lot of these fish and the gizzard shad and everything else that's shallow, there goes one right there, are gonna leave. But for now, there's no current. And uh, I think this is their best place they can sit to forage is up on these brim beds. And so we spent a lot of our day looking around. No bueno. That's how we fish our spinner bait. Right there. Reel them as fast as you can. There's one. Little bitty thing. Remember I told you it'd be a big one if I got a bite. No bite? No bite? What? That looked good. That looked like a guarantee right there. All right, let's go. That is a scorable bass at a non-scorable time. <laughs> Probably has a shaky head 14 inches down his throat. We need some, we need like razor line. Just cuts the grass. Welcome to the Tennessee River. And this is all we do here. We don't fish, we don't have fun. We just stare at screens and bake in the sun. That was bass? No. That's another drum. No, it's a crappie. Crappy. That's Lieutenant Dan. That's his name. Probably shouldn't have set the hook right there. Dude, I don't have hooks on this frog. I took hooks off of this, by the way. Look, it just fell out. <laughs> How'd you do that? Look, there's no, I guess I just stuck him hard enough. Look, I cut the points off of it. There's no points on that frog. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one though. Dude, that's, that's like a three one. and three quarters. I was just saying this frog's called Lieutenant Dan because he ain't got no legs because he ain't got no hooks. Dang, I was twitch, 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 twitch and I just like out of the corner of my eye saw the slightest wake and I was like, that might've been a fish, I'm gonna stop it. There we go. He'd score, but not by much. Yet again, last, last fish catch you just saw was a frog fish. That's a deep ledge fish. What are we gonna do? I don't know. This tournament could literally be one 10 different ways. How? 
That's a $100,000 question. It's a catch fish here marker. The Lake Gunnersville people put these on the best ledges. They got tired of throwing their buoys out, so they put these out. I don't know what I'm gonna do, dude. There's one up there. Look at him, look at him. See him? Let's see if he'll bite. He's not very big. Dinkers. Oh my gosh. It's a different one. That's the problem is this is the size that they are up here. Dude, I see more. I see there's like two or three more right there. Watch this. This is how you catch a bass. You ready? Right here, like this. You throw the wacky rig out there, you shake it a couple times, you let it sink, and then you set the hook. <laughs> it's easy. If you have live scope on your boat, they come straight to you. Dang, there's a big one. Look, there's like a five pounder. That tells you when you do get around a brim bed that's got them, it's really got them. Uh -huh. Like that right there. I mean, do what is that, three? Uh -huh. Four bites right there? Does that change my strategy? Yeah. That right there, probably. There's literally like that last brim bed with schools of bass around that one brim bed. There was like six, seven bass, mostly small ones, but there was one big one lurking around in there. And I, I think it's a fish that probably will bite at a certain time. It looked at my bait hard. I mean, it was a four plus pounder. And then I just saw another four plus pounder right there. So I don't know, we've got some offshore fish and here's the deal, the offshore fish, they're, they're going out there. Like they're headed that way, but there's gonna be places that they're not there yet. So my thought process now is just kind of shifted. We're gonna start deep, no doubt. But now that my thought process has shifted, like, hey, let's search for more brim beds, make yourself a cut. And if you if you can find enough brim beds, catch enough fish shallow, maybe then you can get time to go graph out deep for some of those fresh fish that are starting to show up. And there may, there's gonna be schools out there in three or four days that weren't there in practice that, you know, maybe fresh, nobody knows about. We honestly might glue shallow the rest of the day, which kind of makes me sad because I'm just completely scrapping my game plan. But what I've seen and what I've heard, gonna be a good little, Good little deal to do. You don't have to fish for them. Put the trolling motor on high and go. Practicing like it's a sight fishing event. And we know we like sight fishing events, right? Look at them all. Look, there goes a two pounder. Look at that one, giant. Dang it, man, you done threw my dinger. There's another good one, golly. With, if there's gonna just gonna be straight up no current all week, you know? The conditions are just too good to fish this way. Like, like to not fish this way right now. You are. There's the big one, the one you see. You just swam out of the bed. Yeah, yeah that's five pounder. Spooky. This is insane. A little better one. Huh? Yeah, he's cool. There are more bass on beds here than there have been anywhere we've been. Yeah, man, this is, uh, we got a, some storms rolling in. I haven't looked at the radar yet, but it looks rather nasty, which means that I'm about to go drop Tyler off to protect his precious little camera and his, you know, soft, sensitive skin. It doesn't do well in the rain. Bye-bye. Hey. Bro. I don't know if y'all can tell, but the storm is coming in. So I'm gonna get myself started on the edit for this video so we can get it out to you guys even faster. The rain is coming down, so good luck to Alton on the water. Rig me up like a little lightweight bellows gill shad. Shad or gill? Gill. No, shad. I'm, I'm rigging me up a green pumpkin bellow shad. I would rig up. Oh, you almost lost it right there. For those of y'all watching, Tyler almost just ate it coming down some slippery steps. That sounds like a band, slippery steps. <laughs> <laughs> I would rig up a white bellow shad, but they're sold out on Tackle Warehouse, so I yeah. might get a bite. How's my hair, by the way? Is it okay? <laughs> I mean, it always looks like that. Is it bad? It's always bad. I mean, it's I... always, how's your hair? <laughs> it always looks like that, always bad. So this afternoon, didn't miss much. Lots of thunderstorms, had to take shelter. Actually had to get off the water early because a severe thunderstorm rolled through, but we found a few more brim beds. Caught a three pounder or two. I'm kind of in a position where I might catch 20 pounds. I might catch 12 pounds. I might be in third place. I might be in 40th place at the end of tomorrow. I just don't know. I'm gonna start out deep. I really don't want to start deep, but I have to because like there's a school, 
It's a decent number of fish. Caught a big large mouth out of it, and it's a place I've caught them good before. And it's just the right time of year. Like there's, it's there's a chance I could start there tomorrow morning. A bunch of big ones have shown up and we go to smacking them. So if y'all wanna see how the first tournament day goes, when that video drops, it's gonna be right here in the corner. Make sure you click it. Hopefully we catch them. I got some sneaky stuff rigged up, so I'm hoping it works. Don't, no, 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 can't be seeing it. But yeah, I got some sneaky stuff rigged up.